Hey, welcome to this next topic on the science of love. That might sound a little mushy, but we're going to get into kind of the hardcore facts about this method that we're cultivating here. Metta, or it's often translated as loving kindness. Um, there's also, it's related to the Greek word agape for unconditional love, but it's really something uh, even simpler. It's just this sense of goodwill or friendliness. In fact, the word metta comes from uh, the Sanskrit word for friend. So I like to translate it as good vibes. And we'll talk about how this changes the brain. Metta meditation is the most powerful technique that I've found. Uh, it's not just a technique, it's actually kind of an attitude towards ourselves, towards our experience and towards others. And it grows with time, it becomes a very tangible feeling. There's been a few interesting studies on metta meditation. The first found that um, Metta actually releases oxytocin in the brain. You might have heard of this, uh, the oxytocin pathway, this uh, hormone related to prosocial emotions and uh, often thought to kind of bring us into balance during stressful situations. And so after three months of compassion training, a technique we'll learn later, um, participants could actually increase, they had more oxytocin released during metta meditation. Another study found that after 12 weeks of uh, metta meditation, there was decreased biological aging in terms of measured by their telomeres, which are kind of like the ends, uh, uh, the shoestring caps on the end of our DNA, and those are related to our age. And that was compared to mindfulness meditation and uh, a contr an, uh, another control group. But it doesn't even take 12 weeks for us to benefit from metta. There was another study that found that just seven minutes of training was enough to boost our mood. And you might have experienced that already with the metta technique. It works very fast. And then finally, a fourth study is very interesting. It compared uh, beginners at loving kindness at, at metta meditation with expert practitioners. And what it found is that the experts were using less of their default mode network, less kind of self-referential or there was less sense of a self, it seems, from the neural activity when they were practicing the technique, when they were generating metta. And what this suggests and what I can share from kind of experience and talking with others is it seems the metta becomes more and more of a selfless quality. It's almost like it kind of dissolves the sense of self as it develops and as you continue to practice. And it also might be a sign that it becomes more effortless for people with practice. A few more benefits of metta that I've personally noticed but haven't been researched. Uh, well, the first is just that it feels good. I think anyone can see that for themselves. It's kind of this warm, glowing feeling in the chest, and that gets stronger as you practice. When I first started out, I had really very little feeling there and I wasn't even sure if I was generating the metta and then it just becomes bigger and bigger as you practice more it starts to become very enjoyable what that does is it collects the mind and it increases our mindfulness so that's another benefit and then lastly life just seems to flow easier and we can have smoother interactions with others and those around us so that's very subjective but it seems that metta meditation can improve our relationships the thing that it took me a very long time to realize, I guess I'm a slow learner, is that metta is not just a technique, it's really a lifestyle. From the Christian tradition, and Jesus has a quote in Corinthians, he says, do everything in love. A lot of these things sound cliche, but when you actually train this attitude and you can notice when you're in this um, attitude of metta and how that feels and how that you approach people with that, you can use the four R's to switch from a kind of tense or a rushing mindset or not treating somebody with a lot of patience and care. You can recognize that tension, release it, and then bring up the metta with a smile and send that to them and relish in that feeling and remain with that as long as you can. That's how you use the four R's in daily life to go from a kind of hectic mindset or a, a kind of selfish thoughts and bring in this metta, which becomes a new default way of being in the world.
every time we treat others poorly or we have even when we judge ourselves this creates some friction in the mind and it, the mind kind of contracts and closes down so what we're doing here is opening it up with the metta this is this becomes kind of a very broad spacious awareness and it's very pro social so you start to see everybody as your friend this is one of your this is your daily challenge today is to actually send metta to three different people you encounter today they don't even have to know that you're feeling this way towards them it could be somebody you just pass on the street and you just kind of mentally it's the intention that matters here you kind of mentally wish them well um and it can be completely silent it's just kind of a feeling of friendliness towards them so this attitude of metta includes how we think about others how we think about ourselves and our actions so little things like feeding a stray dog or picking up a friend at the airport um of course give, giving to charity these are all forms of showing metta and then also in our thoughts and then this becomes our kind of default way of thinking and this is how we're rewiring the brain remember that mental fitness is an all the time practice whatever we do to get off of autopilot can help rewire our brain the uh formal sitting practice that you're doing in this course is very important cuz this is kind of like going to the gym when you formally train your muscles but then just as a an athlete who might go to the gym and work hard if they were to just eat junk food all day and treat their body poorly the benefits in the gym wouldn't show up as much they wouldn't their muscles wouldn't kind of grow and in the same way here uh we have to think about what are we feeding our minds and what kind of attitude do we have off the cushion because that's where we can actually train all day long and then instead of just 10 minutes of ben benefit or 20 or 30 minutes when you're sitting you can begin to get you know 12 16 hours as long as you are using the recognized step and using the four hours throughout the day you can be training your mind in whatever you do you can be chopping the vegetables with metta just this kind of attitude of friendliness and care towards whatever you do and then your mind is constantly being trained so have fun living in the metaverse you can really start to enjoy this and notice what brings you out of it notice the kind of triggers and little things that take you out of that mindset and then that's an example through recognizing and releasing those kind of negative or buggy programs in the mind you can start to inhabit this very happy very present way of being more often in order to do that in order to make this a lifestyle i encourage you to start having a walking meditation practice you can spend 15 30 minutes walking back and forth uh keeping your gaze kind of 45 degrees just angled in front of you so you're not looking here and there and continuing to stay with this feeling thank you for taking the time to train your mind and this is uh part of the fit my nonprofit our goal is to make mental fitness and deep meditation accessible to everybody um tomorrow uh in the fourth lesson and training you'll further develop your metta skills and we'll talk about how to have fun all day long thank you